Today we're making over my studio. Pumped. I've got two, my fingers are purple from my hair. I've got two rooms for making these videos. I've got this room, which is gonna be my studio slash filming room. And then I've got a room across the hall, which is gonna be my office slash editing room. It's actually gonna be more of like a co-working space. I'm reusing a lot of furniture from the last studio. I've got this desk, which used to be my work desk. Now it's gonna be my shooting desk for videos like this. And then I've got my couch, which I'm gonna be reusing. Uh, the nice thing now is that we have guest rooms down in the basement. So this room does not need to double as a guest room. However, the couch still pulls out. Worst case scenario, if we need a third bed, we got it. Now the room is not very big, so having tripods and light stands and mic stands, it's a lot. It takes up a lot of space and it's hard to kind of get around in here. So we're gonna have to think creatively about how we can set those things up and try to get stuff off of the floor and either up onto the walls or up onto the ceiling. And we're also gonna do an overhead rig, which by the time you watch this video is probably done. So I'm gonna link it up here. Now that we don't have any cream carpet, Thank God we've got wood floors. We're gonna have neutral walls, so we're going super black and white in this room because obviously, you know, I love black and white. Let's do it, let's get started. I'm gonna start prepping the windows, prepping for paint. So my house is built in the 90s, so I don't know if the wall and trim paint are um, oil or latex. So I'm gonna take some nail polish remover on this cotton swab and I'm just gonna rub it. If paint comes off, it's latex. If it doesn't, it's oil. I have a feeling that that window might not be latex. The wall is latex. No, no, oh, the trim is oil, I have to, I have to actually prime the entire window and then paint. Shit. All right, so I need to go get some primer for this or else the paint won't stick. Actually, I wonder, I wonder if this will work. Shit. If only it were that easy. Pizza and then priming. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna prime the trim. We're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna cut in the rest of this space. My God, it's literally 1.15 and I've been trying to paint this room since 10 o'clock this morning and between this and trying to make this video. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, I just finished cutting in. I wanted to show you guys the difference between these two whites. Decorator's white, as I mentioned, is a very cold white. It's blue. It's got like kind of bluish undertones. The decorator's white is definitely a lot more blue, white, poppy, modern white. And this is more of like a transitional kind of linen white. Okay, we got the white done. Now it's time for the black. Now is when you're gonna see this room completely change. Holy shit. Okay, the painting is done. I realized that I forgot to prime my trim on the side of the room, so I have to prime it and then paint it, but I had to wait 24 hours to paint it after the primer dries. Okay, so I shot that part of the video like last April, and since then, as we've been kind of working on the room, we've realized that we wanted more out of that space than the size of the space would actually allow. We're gonna be moving that studio to this basement. As I mentioned before in like a previous video, I don't know why we didn't really think of it before. I guess we didn't really think we needed it, but we have this huge unfinished basement. I don't know why we didn't decide at the beginning when we moved in to turn this into a studio. Back in our house in St. John's, we actually turned our entire basement into like a photography studio. And it was so nice to have that huge space to just have things set up all the time. And it was big enough where you could kind of get around without tripping over light stands and stuff, which is what's happening up there. It's actually rage inducing there's just so much stuff up there. We're gonna strip it down. We're gonna take the backdrops and the multiple sets and we're gonna move them down into the basement and we're gonna continue to use that room as a set but also to store camera gear, to charge camera gear um, and for a couple of other uses which we'll talk about probably in a separate video. So I wanted to talk about how to find your interior design style. I'm seeing a lot of people posting studio makeovers and office makeovers and I think sometimes when people start it's like how do I figure out what style to do other than just emulating what somebody else is doing. How do I figure out what I really, really like and what I want my space, my studio, my office, or my room to look? So the first thing I would recommend to do is go onto Pinterest and just pin a bunch of things that you really, really like, that really engage you 
visually. So just create a Pinterest board or whatever, t title it whatever room you're working on and just pin a bunch of things that you like. Then when you go back and look at your Pinterest board or your saved images on Instagram, however you decide to do it, you'll start to see trends show up and that should tell you kind of the things that you're really, really drawn to. So for example, I had no idea I liked dark rooms when I first started getting into making over spaces back in 2011 when we started our blog. I didn't really know I liked dark rooms until I started pinning dark and moody spaces and I didn't really realize it until after I went back and looked at my pin board and was like, oh shit, like most of these rooms have dark gray or black walls. And I really like that look and therefore I incorporate that look into most of our spaces. And our, and our Instagram account apparently. Once you figure out what your style is, for me it's like dark and moody, mid-century modern meets Scandinavian. My friend Pat calls it evil Scandinavian, which I love that. Um, so that's kind of like what I would define my style as. So once I figured out what my style was, what things I liked, what color schemes I liked, it was a lot easier for me to design design spaces because I could kind of default to one particular look. So if you guys, I actually have put together a Pinterest board with studio inspiration. So if you guys want to see my Pinterest board for studios, I'll leave it in the description box below. Maybe it will give you some ideas for your space. A couple of things. What if your aesthetic doesn't match your price range or your budget? And listen, I've been there when we bought and renovated our first house, my style did not match our budget at all. We had $0. Well, we had didn't have zero dollars, we couldn't have bought a house with zero dollars, but we didn't have a lot of money and I liked nice things. So what we ended up doing was DIYing a lot of it to try to get the look of these spaces that I was pinning for an affordable price. So DIY, do it yourself. Um, we did a lot of DIY projects, Ikea, Target, um, searching and scouring home goods um, or home sense or whatever's in your area. So it, it kind of takes like a lot of extra time when you're on a budget to research and, and hunt for things if you're on a budget, but it can be done if your price doesn't match your aesthetic. DIY, you can find knockoff things and you can still get the look for less. You just gotta be clever about it. Okay, colors, we're gonna talk about colors. When I pick paint, the Literally the only paint I use is Benjamin Moore Regal Select in matte finish. And this is not sponsored, that's just like over the years of doing uh, home renovations and DIY projects, that just happens to be my favorite finish of paint and I like the way it goes on, it's really thick. That's my favorite. So um, most of the walls you'll see in our house are either black by Benjamin Moore or gray by Benjamin Moore. I don't know why I keep picking colors that don't have exciting names. Um, and then when it comes to white, we always default to decorators white. We're gonna flash back and let past me explain this. Cream and wood tones and my skin color don't go well together. They're too similar. So bluish tint in the decorators white, it's there's more of a separation between my skin tone and the actual wall color. So I tend to pick colors that are cooler, that are sometimes darker, and uh, that are kind of the opposite of my skin tone. So that's how you find your design style. I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, we're gonna finish off the room upstairs. This is kind of what the filming set currently looks like. We have it done. We have a nice uh, bookcase for our gear to charge our batteries and stuff, but the rest of the room is a bit of a shit show right now. So we're gonna be um, renovating the space and bringing you guys along for the ride, which I'm really excited about. But for now, I gotta run to the hardware store because I got materials to pick up. We gotta get these walls sanded, we gotta get them primed. And it's so fun to be doing this again because it feels like old school times, like our original content when we were doing um, blog stuff. I'm pumped to be back at it and it's exciting. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I talk really fast, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. And we'll see you on the next one. Oh, that was, oh. That was anticlimactic.